my name is Marissa and I am also known as the Crafty Heifer here on YouTube and on Instagram. I am coming to you today with my very first floss tube video finally, right? So those of you that have been with me for a long time, you know that I have been cross stitching a lot lately, pretty much exclusively. Um, I started this YouTube channel as a diamond painter. I'm still diamond painting, I'm just not doing it at the moment. Um, so for those of you that have been with me for a while, welcome back. For those of you that are checking me out for the first time, welcome. I hope you enjoy what I have to offer for you. Okay, so let's talk real, you guys. Um, I'm wearing a hat because I didn't feel like doing my hair. Um, I'm wearing no makeup, but the lighting is great, right? Like my skin looks good. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty impressed by it, actually. So I have turned you around 180 degrees from the way that I usually film. So I usually film with my overhead camera um, is the way that I've pretty much been filming exclusively since I got that for my birthday back in January. And I thought I would flip you around so that you could see what I look at while I'm talking to you guys, while I'm filming, while we're doing our uh, lives and things like that. So this is my craft area back here. Eventually, at some point, sometime, there will be a tutorial about how I set all of this up. This is my dining room, my dining nook, I should say, in my apartment. Okay, so let's get to why most of you are here, and that is cross-stitch. So I started cross-stitching um, originally about a year and a half ago. Um, it was in the summer of 2018, and I tried it out. I had not discovered floss tube. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know anybody that cross stitched. So I was kind of like following a couple of tutorials on YouTube and that was about it. Um, it just really didn't take me at the time. It was just kind of like, okay, I tried this. I finished one project. Um, it looks really bad. <laughs> Honestly, it looks like a beginner. I won't say it looks really bad. It looks like a beginner did it because a beginner did do it. And in the process of doing all of that, I discovered diamond painting. And so I started diamond painting in October of 2018. So I've had just over about a year and a half now of diamond painting. And that was like, yes, all of the things, it happened, all of the things, I was so excited about it. I jumped on, I found some really great people on YouTube that I've become really good friends with. Some of them that, you know, we talk every week or multiple times a week. You know just seeing people in chats and things like that so i started all of that and then i started my youtube channel did diamond painting um i do host the community events um as far as uh the diamond paint along and the, the dp marathons um the dp a thons um you know that was not my idea but that was my organization things i've done that since the very first one um i am hosting a crafting retreat in October, fingers crossed that it does not have to be canceled. Um, but this will be the first time I'm painting retreat anywhere. And um, so we're going to do that. We're going to hopefully be able to do that maybe once or twice a year. Um, we'll see how this first one goes <laughs> and how much time I can put into it because I do several things. Those of you that have been here a while, you know that. You know I'm involved in lots and lots of different things. So. Anyway, I do a lot of the community events. One of the community events that we are going to start doing, uh, since we are all still in quarantine at home at the moment, is um, this last Saturday, yesterday. This is Sunday the 26th of April, by the way. Um, yesterday, we did our first Zoom craft along. So my idea is I've been really missing actually getting to talk to people. I live in an apartment, I'm single, so I live by myself. I don't have any pets. And so I have been really needing some company and the people that I talk to on a regular basis are probably really tired of talking to me, to be honest. So I was like, I had used Zoom for a couple of things and I thought the cross, one of the cross stitch groups that uh, here is local had invited me to do a couple of things. We did it on Zoom and I was like, you know what? I am down for this. So um, I've done a Saturday chat it is completely open. Anybody can join. You don't have to be a creator. You can be a viewer. You can be one of those people that never says anything, a lurker. Um, but you are more than welcome to join us on Saturday mornings from 10 Central Time, 10 a.m. Central to noon. So about two hours. And um, we're just going to get on, bring your craft project. We're going to ask you to show us what you're working on. 
and then we're just gonna chit chat we laughed so hard yesterday that my abs hurt today like I laughed so hard I haven't laughed that hard in so long and it was very needed so thank you to everyone that joined us yesterday we had about 15 people in there and it was fantastic to get to chat with everybody and see how they were and and all that and just kind of crack jokes and just not take life too seriously right so if you want to do that there is a google form down below um, to fill out it is your name it is uh, your email address and whether you've used zoom or not and those are the three questions on there it takes you like 30 seconds to fill it out and then what i will do is i will email you the zoom invite on friday thursday night or friday morning um for the saturday chat and then so when the time comes on saturday you go to zoom whether you've downloaded that on one of your devices or you use your web browser to open it up you go into that you log in and you come in and join us that's all there is to it it's super easy uh, so we're going to be doing that like i said it's completely open we would love to have anybody whether you cross stitch crochet whatever you do diamond paint join us okay all right so let's go ahead and get this started since i've done six minutes of me talking at you um i do talk fast <laughs> sorry <laughs> all right so i have one finish this week um which i'm pretty proud of so i finished this last night um and this is one of the ornaments that comes with the linens and threads uh, mystery sampler 2020 sal um, I've been working on that one and this is the February ornament I believe and I saw this design and I really loved the idea of it and I will hold it closer so you can kind of see some of the details and so what I'm gonna do is I saw this and I thought I'm gonna make this for a friend of mine and I want to add some beads onto it so I found these beads I've seen these before at Dollar Tree and I was in the family dollar and to get stuff that I actually needed and I just happened to see these as I walked by the aisle and so I stopped and picked them up and they're just different size uh, beads some seed beads some long ones I don't know what all the name of the beads are and I thought it would be really cute to put some of these beads onto this project um, just to kind of judge it up a little give it a little bit of more interest and so I'm going to add some of those beads on, um, which really shouldn't take me that long. I kind of played around with it yesterday. I did buy some Mill Hill beading needles. And so I've got those here. And like I said, I kind of played around with those and it shouldn't take me that long. So that should be a fully finished object. I think I'm just going to put it in a smaller hoop, honestly, and make it like an ornament style um, to finish that. So that was my finish for the week um i am a very slow stitcher i have learned of course i am still a beginner um so if you take it from january i've only been doing this for about four three four months um so i am pretty slow it takes me a while so like this ornament i know there are a lot of you um stitchers that have a lot of experience you probably could have done this in a few hours and this took me about a week and a half to work on um off and on so please don't judge me because i'm slow <laughs> all right so let's talk about the project that started it all off um as i told you i made some really good friends in the diamond painting community and a lot of those friends have now decided to cross stitch they picked up cross stitching and so i was watching rachel ray and that's ray r-a-e if you would like to check out her channel she is fantastic she is definitely um, she was one of the first ones that I found and one of the ones that I still continue to watch. Um, she found this Hog Letters to Hogwarts mystery style, okay? And so she was talking about it on her channel and I thought, you know what, I want to, I kind of wanted to give cross stitching a try. I was kind of burned out on the diamond painting and I was like, it's hog it's it's harry potter like i love harry potter we all know i'm a potterhead if you've been here for a while you don't even have to be here for a while if you've been here for one video you probably have heard me mention harry potter and how much i love it so um she was talking about this so i got online i got all the things and for my birthday my birthday gift to myself is i kitted this project up okay now i was afraid at the time to cut the fabric so all of the excess fabric is still on here and this is a large project don't get me wrong 
this is how far I've gotten on it. Now, I worked on this um, pretty exclusively for about a month, and then I haven't touched it since then. So I made, I've done the owl, which is not great, but it's done. And then the red swirl, the blue swirl, and I had started the base of the alternative castle. Now they do have a Facebook page, which is fantastic because Stuart Cunningham, who's the designer of this um, sow at uh, Cutting Cross Stitch, is really, really excellent about letting people kind of make their own twist on things. He's kind of one of those, um, not taking words out of his mouth, but basically from what he said on his post on YouTube is that, you know, we're the ones that are stitching these and we're the ones that have to live with them. And so um, he lets us, lets people make modifications if they would like to. So there's all kinds of different modifications that you can make to this pattern. Um, People have done alternative castles and alternative, you know, the other edge of the border and they've done alternative pages and chapters and things like that. And so those are all on that page. So if you want to do that Harry Potter style, it's very large. I don't remember the exact stitch count right now, but it is a very large one. Um, I would encourage you to do that. The Facebook group is fantastic. I've learned quite a bit on there just from other people asking questions. And of course, you know, getting to admire other people's work and things like that. It makes you excited to, or it makes me excited anyway, to be working with other people and then learning as they go. So when I asked, um, I'd asked a question, I can't remember what it was. And they were like, well, make sure you do this and make sure you know this and make sure this and da, da, da. And so all of those mistakes that they had made or issues that they had run into, they were very happy to politely um, tell me about those before I got there. So, and everybody's at different stages. That is a year long, uh, stitch along. So that one will be a year to complete. He releases one chapter every other month. Um, so there will be six chapters. And then of course the border, the top and the bottom of it will have already been released. That was the first thing he released back in like September, October last year. So I need to get to work on that because I am way behind. I'm the top, the bottom, and two chapters behind. And I think May 1st, the next chapter drops. I'm not going to stress about it, but I know that I am very behind on that one. So that was the first project that started it all off. I kitted that whole thing up. It was kind of expensive to do so because I didn't have anything really to draw from. So I needed pretty much everything. So I went and got everything and, um, it took me a little while to get started because I was pretty intimidated by it. So I straight out of the gate, I didn't start small. I started very big. Um, the next one that came along is a Harry Potter one that I found on Etsy. And I'm going to have to get the, if you'll excuse me just a moment, of course. Okay, sorry about that. So the next one that I worked on is I found this one on Etsy. And I will put the link in for it below. And it is this lovely Hufflepuff Badger um, from the Harry Potter series. And so I bought this and I took it with me to Memphis when we traveled for St. Jude. And, um, you know, kitted it all up. All the flosses are in here and everything like that. And I started on it and I have already messed it up. I didn't get a whole lot done on it because, you know, it's pretty much just when we were flying. Um... Oops. But this is what I got done. So I was working on this darker brown color here while we were flying. And I was trying to do, I think it's called cross country method. And it's not going to work for me. I don't like it. I don't like the counting. There's quite a lot of mistakes just in this small area. And then I went to do this part and realized after I got this part done, all of this creamy color, it's completely the wrong color. So what I plan to do with this is I plan to completely frog this and then I'm going to dye this fabric um, the mottled yellow background. I will, I've been wanting to play around with dyes and uh, dyeing my own Ada cloth and this is all on, um, I think all of my projects are on 18 count Ada. Um, I really like the 18 count and so um, I've been wanting to dye my own Ada. And I thought this is, would be the, a great project because as you can see, it's supposed to have this like mottled gold, yellow, variegated background. 
And so my idea is if I dye the fabric, I don't have to do all of these stitches out here. I can do just the badger and the scarf. And so that's kind of really where I'm leaning. So I think I'm going to frog this project. And this is just a personal project. It's not a big deal for me to finish. It's not part of any challenge or anything like that. But that's kind of where I'm at with this one. It's just, I was not inspired once I started it. I love the picture. Like, love, love the picture. And I actually bought the Gryffindor one and the Ravenclaw one as well um, at the time because they had a buy two, get one free sale. And once I started it, I just, it wasn't really, it wasn't judging. It I wasn't feeling it at the time. So, like I said, I think that's what I'm going to do with that one. I'll let you know how that goes once I can actually get the writ dye that I need. Um, but I kind of want to play around with some, some dyeing some fabric. So, that's what I'm going to plan on doing with that one. Okay. So, this next one, the first time I saw it, I absolutely fell in love. Fell in love. And... I'm pretty sure I saw it on Instagram and there was um, there was somebody and they did it and it was just white background with blue thread and I was just like oh yes yes so I looked it up and it is the linens and threads 2020 mystery sow okay I have noticed that as I've been looking at projects, I'm really drawn to the Quaker style projects and I'm drawn more to like the sampler style over a full coverage project. Chances are I will never in my life do a head, a heaven and earth design. Um, it's probably not going to happen. I don't think I can. I, I No, I'm just not interested. Okay. So, those of you that can do those, kudos, because, my goodness, um, I like projects that have some space on them. <laughs> that is what I have noticed. All the ones that I have picked out, you know, there might be, like, a central part that's, you know, really solid, but then, you know, there's other places. I just don't seem to like the full coverage pieces, or I'm not drawn to the full coverage pieces. Let me, let me put it that way. So, I got the Linens and Threads Mystery Sal. I got all the fabric, um... I am using the, I had started out using the DMC Variegated 4240, which looks like this. It does have a light purple in it. It doesn't usually show up on screen very well, but it is showing up today. Um, oh, that's a good one right there. Yeah. So you can see the purples and the blues. So just DMC, I found it at Michael's when I got my fabric. Um, I went ahead and purchased, um, as you can see, I really like Q-snaps, so that's pretty much what I'm using is Q-snaps. Okay, so I started this project. I was super excited because I took it and I mounted it all in the frame and I got ready to travel and I started it in the car on the way to a wedding because we had a six and a half hour drive. And I got there and uh, my aunt had the serger out. And I wanted to serger the edges because they were already starting to fray on the Ada. And this is, again, 18 count Ada. And so I take the project out of the Q-snap and I realized I started in the wrong space. I started in the wrong place in the Q-snap, okay? So I had my Q-snap like this. It should have been turned like this. No, I had it like this and it should have been turned like this. There you go. Um, and I realized I'm showing you the back of my project. <laughs> I had this element almost done before I realized that and I refused to start over. I was not taking out, I was not frogging six hours worth of work. I, I can't. So I counted, I looked at the pattern really carefully and I counted and the, the two elements are only off by just a few stitches. And so I thought, I'm just gonna fudge this, okay? So this is what I did. So this V-shaped element here should be in the top corner. And this round element should be down here okay so i'm gonna make this work as you can see i still have to finish the leaves up here on this side i got a little off count on those there's there's a lot of mistakes in this you guys but i feel like it looks when you hold it back here it still looks good so my butterfly probably should have been over a little further but you know what this is for me this is pure pleasure for me and so i really enjoyed doing this i really like this quaker style 
it happens, right? New beginner mistakes. I still think it looks really good. I love the coloring. The variegation on this yarn really is not showing up. It pretty much looks blue. You can see a little bit of purple every now and then, but it pretty much shows up blue. So I will show you in haul. I've got a couple of uh, new threads to work with this project on. Um, so this is the January section. Um, I finished that and that's when I ordered the new thread. So I haven't picked this one up yet, but this one probably will come back into rotation here very shortly. Um, but I'm going to need to do February, March, and April. And then of course May is fixing to drop as well. So this one has been my favorite to work on so far. And, um, while I'm aware it needs some work, I'm happy with it. So I just have to be more careful turning things on the pattern. And what I learned from this is I have to mark my starting corner. I didn't do that. That was on me, completely my fault. So, but again, I wasn't going to, to pull out six hours worth of work. <laughs> okay, so those are the ones that I had started. Those are all of my whips. I do have one project kitted up that is ready for a start. And this one will hopefully in the next couple of weeks. I know I'm already behind on it. I think I'm I think my theme for the year is just gonna be I'm behind on it. Um so I had purchased this is the Tempting Tangles. Let me try that again. Tempting Tangles Quakers in Scotland Sal. And for the background. I asked um, in the group, there's a group on Facebook for this one as well. I think most of the styles have a Facebook group that you can talk to each other and get hints and things like that in. I was thinking about the background. They recommend, I think, like a cream colored background and I, all of my other projects are on a cream background or a white background. And I thought, I want something a little bit different. And I was in one of the online um, stash buster, stash unloading uh, groups. And I found this 28 count, we think it's probably a linen. And I thought this gray, this is a really pretty, like I would call it like a light dove gray color. It's really not showing up. Well, you can see it against my shirt. It's gray, um, but it's absolutely gorgeous. The fabric is really soft. I don't know what kind of linen this is. She didn't have it marked, um, but just looking at the fabric kind of it really looks like a linen I don't know you can't really see it on camera but if you know what it is that would be great um, it's got some really good drape to it anywho I'm going to be working on this project on this lovely gray which is I love it this might be my favorite color to work on from now on <laughs> and I haven't even started on it yet so the tempting tangles um Scotland. Here's some of the colors there, which these colors on this gray, um, I've shown this in a couple of my lives before, or at least in one of my lives. And then I did one for one of the cross stitch groups. These colors against this gray, there's part of them. Oh, it's so pretty. Um, I think I posted it on Facebook or on Instagram maybe. And then there's the rest of the colors. So not a whole lot of colors, but I'm excited to start this one. The pictures that I'm seeing of people that are already working on it are absolutely amazing. So this is going to be my first new start. Whatever, whenever it happens, this will be the first one that I start next. Uh, my next start instead of first new start. My next start will be the Tempting Tangles uh, Quakers in Scotland. Again, another Quaker pattern. Okay, so... I have all of that. Those are all of my whips. Um, one thing I've talked about, a lot of you, again, that have been here already know this. Um, I am not one that will ever have a huge stash. Um, it's just not in my nature. I don't have the space to store anything like that. Um, I see stuff that I like and I'll like favorite it or I'll put it on a wish list. And a lot of times, like eight times out of 10, I'll come back to something in three months and I don't like it that much anymore. 
So that's one of the reasons I don't have a huge stash, okay? I set a budget for myself every month on what I'm allowed to spend on crafty things. And with my diamond painting, I set a, a limit on how many I could have in the house. And that limit was five. I could have five at any one time, including the one I was working on. So usually what I did, because I chose big ones, a lot of my, or pretty much all of mine were bigger than 40 by 50 um, centimeters. Um, most of the ones I worked on were in like the 17 or the 70 by 50 centimeter range, which is like 16 by 20 inches. So like poster sized ones, right? So I said, you know, you can only have five at a time. And I did an excellent job keeping track of that and staying on track with that. I think at one point I had seven, but one of them was a gift and one of them was um, pretty much done and I had to order time-wise. I had to ha have another one um, in to be able to have it already here to work on it. it. Does that make sense? I don't know if that made any sense. I'm sorry. Let me stop and take a drink. Okay. So, when I started cross-stitching, I decided that I was going to do the same thing with cross-stitching. Um, I'm going to allow myself to have five kitted up projects. And so, um, those are my five projects, basically. So, Hogwarts, the uh, Badger, the Linens and Threads Sampler, and the Tempting Tangles Quakers in Scotland. That's four. And um, then, of course, this would have been my fifth project there, which kind of counts because it's linens and threads and I just pulled that yarn or that excuse me I say yarn that thread out of my stash so I'm allowed to have one more but what I did instead is I've been allowing myself to buy a few things not going overboard but to buy a few things so I can still buy one other project um I haven't decided exactly what I want that to be but because I was watching uh, several floss tubers and they're, everybody's talking about mania, stitch mania right now. No, y'all. Mm -mm. Y'all, have fun. Y'all have fun. I will love watching everything that you do. However, it's not for me. Um, but I was watching Lindy Stitches this morning, and she was talking about stitch sania. And so basically, instead of having all of the new stuff um, and the new starts, like 20 starts in a month, like, oh my God. Um, I'm going to do Stitch Sania, and I'll talk about that a little bit more here in a minute. But, I've been allowing myself to buy a few things as I saw things that I really loved. So, I have some hand-dyed floss that I purchased. Because all of our stores, basically, by the time I found out about Fancy Floss, all the stores were closed. So, I can't, like, and I'm one of those people, I want to go in and I want to touch it and look at it in person and you know like actually see all of the colors and things before I buy something. So um, my friend Jesse over at Miss Laid Pages um, was talking about this uh, dyer in one of her videos or on her live, I can't remember which one, but she, she mentioned it. So of course I went over and joined the group and it's the group is called Dying for Cross Stitch. And on Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. Central, she puts all the stuff that she's dyed that week up. So she does the floss first, and then she does the fabric. And I can't remember, it was like the first or second week I was there, I went ahead and purchased some fabric. So I purchased two 10 yard skeins of this one, and I think this one is called Cotton Candy. So you can see it's just a very whimsical pink and purple color. So I got two of those. I have no idea what I'm going to use them for, but I wanted them. And then I got two of these. And this one is called Silver Surfer. And I believe her name is Kathy, if I'm remembering correctly off the top of my head. So I got those for, and they were not very expensive at all. And they came packaged just like this. So I purchased those, so that's my first fancy floss. They're just, caught, it's cotton floss, but hand dyed floss, okay? I don't know if that's technically fancy floss or not, but to me it is. 
And then I was in that same um, stash unloading group that I bought the gray fabric from. And in fact, the same person posted this fabric. And I was just like, I don't know what I'm doing with it, but I need to have it. So, yes, you guys. Is that not just completely gorgeous? I thought this was just, and it sparkles. It's got sparkles in it. Oh yeah, that's showing up on camera really well. So you can see the whole thing has got sparkles in it. I just thought this would be gorgeous for like a fun Halloween or like I'm not into mermaids, so that's probably not going to happen, but I could do all kinds of stuff with this, right? So yeah. So I have that one. I will figure out what to use it for. I can guarantee you that. There will definitely be figuring out in my future. But I went ahead and bought that and I think it was like 10 or $12. It wasn't expensive. And if I remember, I believe it is 18 count Ada. If I'm remembering correctly. So I purchased that from the same person that I purchased the gray from. And I believe her name is Melissa. So that was my first purchase. And then um, I checked my bank account a couple weeks ago before the stimulus checks got here. And I realized that I haven't been spending as much money, I guess, as I usually do because I'm not out all the time. You know, I'm not seeing things that I don't, you know, that you need. Sorry, my stuff is falling. Give me just a second, guys. So I um, had a couple of things that I had earmarked on Etsy and um, I got online and one of the things that I purchased, of course, was the linens and threads uh, sampler, the floss that I wanted to buy for that. So I got online and because I had a little bit extra in my budget, well, I had a lot extra in my budget, I'm not going to lie to you. Um, I went ahead and got online and I got, went on to Ancora Crafts website. There's their card. Flip it over for you. So Catherine Daniels and I ordered two skeins of her floss. So the first one that I got this one is called Bikini Blue, and you guys, oh, I opened this and was just like, are you kidding me right now? It is freaking gorgeous. Oh, I just absolutely love this color. I'm definitely going to have to order more. Now, I got the 20-yard um, skeins, so these are 20-yard skeins here. Yeah, so I'm going to be using this um, on that Linens and Thread Sal. And then I got this purple, and I cannot remember the name of it. Um, it's 11582. And these are Threadworks threads. That purple oh, is giving me all the life, you guys. Are you kidding me right now? Are you serious? Like, oh, yeah, seriously. So those are going to be, um, this is going to be my February color, and this is going to be my March color. And then I'll probably go back to the 4140 for April. Um, but yeah, these, yes. Yes, I will be ordering from her again. Absolutely. These are absolutely gorgeous. They feel really nice in the hand. Now, well, I will say this. I'm going to stitch with these first and see how they stitch. But I've heard good things about Threadworks, I think. I don't think I've heard anything bad about them. So I can't imagine that they're going to be like horrible to stitch with. But who knows? I may find out that they are. But I did purchase those. Super excited when I got those in uh, last week. And then I got online and I ordered from a company that I have ordered from before. And this company is called the Crab Shack Stitchery. And that is really hard to say with a southern accent. I don't know why. But Crab Shack Stitchery. Let me get their card here. And they do grind guards, and she also does um, 
uh, project bags. She doesn't have a whole lot of project bags in the shop, but she always has a lot of grime guards. And I love that they do different size grime guards. So when I first started, I thought I was going to be able to use a 17 by 17 frame for that Hogwarts one. Nah, man. Nah. Mm -mm. So I'd ordered a 17 by 17. It came with a free one. So that polka dot one that I had, that fabric that was around it, I have kind of just tucked fabric to make it fit a smaller, the 8 by 11. Um, but so I wanted to order some smaller ones to actually fit on those Q-snaps that I have. I really like that 8 eight by 11 combination, by the way. I think it may be my favorite. So I got online and I did some ordering. So the first one that I ordered is an 11 by 11 and it's this lovely hibiscus print. As you can see here. And you guys, the stitching on these is amazing. Like it's really nicely done. I haven't had any issues at all with these. They hold really well. Um, so yeah, so just this lovely hibiscus print reminded me of my mom. So I got that grime guard. And like I said, that's an 11 by 11. The next one that I got, um, one of the things that she does is she sends, you get one free. So you buy one, you get one free usually. Um, or she sends one free gift basically is what it is in each package. I'm not sure. I only got one extra gift. So I'm assuming it's an extra gift. And I actually really like this fabric as well. So that polka dot one was actually my spare the last time, my gift. And I actually really like this fabric. This is also an 11 by 11. Is this a batik? Is that what this is called? I don't know what kind of print this is. Anyway, so she sent me this one too. So I've got two 11 by 11s. And then I found this and I was like, yes, yes, we have to have that because, oh my God, you guys, it's so stinking cute. You guys, there's black sheep. <laughs> I absolutely freaking love this. So it's little, little lambs and then it's got a little black one. <laughs> I was so excited to see this. I absolutely had to have this. Um, so this one I got in an eight by eight. Oh, y'all. Mm. So yes, so thank you so much to the Crab Shack Stitchery for these because yeah, I absolutely love them. I've got enough to do all of my projects now. I think the next time I have to get a round one, but I ordered these. I absolutely love them. I was super excited to get them in. And um, yeah, so now I've got one for each project. So I'll be putting those on my projects uh, now that I've opened the package. Y'all, I already opened it. I already saw it. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> that came in the mail and I was like, uh, move mail, man. Time for me to come in. Okay. So that is what I have for you um, as far as that kind of stuff goes. So as I was saying just a minute ago, Stitch Sania. So basically what Miss Lindy was saying was that um, instead of doing like a new start every however it is, however it works with Mania, I don't know how it works, um, that she is going to do like get to a certain point on a project and then she will let herself have a new start. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of modify that just a little bit. Let me get comfortable here. I'm going to modify that just a bit. And since I do limit myself to only having five projects, I thought what I would do is if I get to a certain point on a project in a week, so I'm going to try to work on one, I'm going to try to work on each of these projects for one week during the month of May. So one week for Hogwarts or for uh, letters to Hogwarts, one week for linens and threads, one week, you know, you get what I'm saying, right? You guys know. One week for the new start. And then instead of making a new start, I'm going to let myself buy a new pattern. Okay. Um, so I've got some patterns that I've had have earmarked that like I really, really want and I want to be able to start. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, I'm going to buy a patriotic pattern. Once I find one, I don't have one of those earmarked right at the moment that I just absolutely love. I have a couple that I like. Not one that I absolutely love. So I'm going to get a patriotic one. That'll be the first one. So for the first week, I'll buy a patriotic pattern. 
For the second week, I'm going to let myself buy the, I don't want to forget, the Halloween Quaker by Lila Studio. I saw that one and I was like, I have to do this. I absolutely have to do it. I'll try to put a picture in so that you guys know which one I'm talking about because seriously, like this is one of the ones saw it and I knew I wanted to do it. So that's going to be my second purchase, my second week, if I fill that week's quota. The third week, um, I'm going to, I'm kind of, so as you can tell from, let me, let me backtrack here. As you can tell from my stash, from my whips, I really like stitch alongs. Um, I really like year long stitch alongs, like big ones. <laughs> um, because all but one of my projects is a stitch along. I found, I was looking for a friend of mine for uh, Rebecca, Rebecca Crafting Journey with Rebecca um, for an Alice in Wonderland one for her. And I happened to stumble across an Adams Family stitch along. And it is the Adams Family Sal from Just Stitch Designs over on Etsy. It's another really large one. I think it's like 300 by 200 or something like that. I don't know if I want to start another really big project, especially if I'm not caught up on the ones that I already have. So that one I'm kind of still on the fence about. You guys let me know. If any of you are stitching that one, please let me know because I know there's a lot of stitch alongs. I really love stitch alongs because you have the excitement of other people doing it with you. I just don't know if I want to start another big stitch along, if that makes sense. So. That one's undecided for week three, and then week four, I'm going to do a Christmas pattern, which I also have not picked out yet, because there are so many that I want to do. So, a patriotic, a Halloween, a third week is unknown, and a Christmas pattern for the fourth week, um, and I feel like that'll be really good, because I don't have to finish those, I just have to purchase them, um, and then I will have a project ready for each season as I kind of get to the different seasons and want to start a new project. I will have those. I can work on getting those kitted up and things like that, getting fabric and those things. So that's kind of what I'm going to do. So I'm going to do Stitch Sania, and that's the way that I think I want to do it. If you guys have any recommendations, please put those in the description box, or not the description box, in the comments down below. <laughs> you can't get into the description box. Um, anything that I talked about today, I will have into the, a link Anything that I have talked about today, I will have a link in the description box for you to join us. So please don't forget to sign up for the Zoom meetings on Saturday mornings if you would like to just come. It's literally, you guys, like a giant, not a slumber party, but just a giant hangout um, for us to just go in and have fun. Please keep it upbeat. Please keep it positive. Um, you know, we, we want to go and laugh. And a lot of us right now, that's what we need is, is to laugh about something. So we're just going to go in, we're going to be silly and kind of tease each other very gently and all of that kind of stuff. Um, thank you so much for joining me for my first floss tube. Um, I don't know how often these will be because like I said, I'm a slow stitcher. Do you really need me to see like my 200 stitches I put in that week? Maybe you do. Let me know. If you like that, let me know. Um, but for right now, I'm going to go ahead and let you go. If you liked this video, please drop a comment um, and let me know what you liked about it. Um, please hit that like button, that thumbs up button to let me know how I'm doing. Um, hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. And if you do that, don't forget to hit the cowbell because everybody needs more cowbell in their lives. Um, I will be coming back hopefully soon. Um, like I said, I do a live on Wednesday nights from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Central Time. And anybody is welcome to join in those. We go in, we have our Wednesday wins that we talk about. We support each other and we kind of have a giggle at some, hopefully everybody has a giggle at some point. I'm happy to have this video done. Like I've been putting this off for so long, you guys, so long. Um, I am wearing my Crafty Heifer shirt that my BFF made me. So it says the Crafty Heifer and it says craft like somebody left the barn door open, which is my outro. So you guys, Stay healthy, stay sane, reach out, talk to people, be with your friends, uh, do what you need to do to take care of yourself. And until I see you next time, guys, remember to craft like someone left the barn door open. Bye.